questions and answers of the law of attraction for the law of attraction. So if you have any, please type your questions and uh, I will see if I can come up with some good answers. <laughs> technology giveth and techn technology taketh away. Let's hope it works this time. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> oh, thanks for sharing that, Cheryl. What a nuisance. From Rianda, sometimes you do live streams and it doesn't show comments or who's watching. Well, that was the case here, unfortunately. Nothing showed up. Um, I'm using the new interface, the new Facebook Live interface, and nothing showed up. Well, Hopefully we're back up and running. So in the meantime, feel free to ask your questions. Yeah, the biggest question I have is why didn't that work? But I think I'll drop that for now. Okay, I haven't seen any comments for a minute. That's probably not great. Um, <laughs> my internet connection seems to be working. No problem, things seem to be happening. Yes, I've just checked something, something came in. What attracts us to a person? <laughs> That's a great question. If I knew the definitive answer, I'd be um, happily married and extremely rich, I suspect, but I can I can share a few things. Um, I'll play with this question until perhaps something else comes up or until you tell me to shut up. What attracts us to a person? Uh, from my understanding, and having lived a fair amount of time, a lot of it comes from our family of origin. Our parents are, to us, God for the first few years because they literally have the power of keeping us alive or not. Karen, welcome. Nice to have you join us. <laughs> yes, strange, strange goings on with technology. Anyway, we're going to continue here and hopefully it will work this time. So, yes, um, we look at our parents and we think, oh, these people are God. So maybe this is the kind of person that, that's important in the world. And so... Men often find themselves being attracted to women who are much like their mother, despite their <laughs> best intentions sometimes, and vice versa for girls and then women and then the men that they're attracted to. So that's one of my understandings. Um, yes, it's interesting. My mother is brunette, for instance, and uh, even though I think I prefer blondes, I, I seem to have been more attracted to brunettes over the years. So... <clears throat> That's, that seems to be a big part of it. It's certainly not the only part. Um, what else? In general, <clears throat> people are, or seem to be in general, attracted to people who are like them. Because whoever we are, we generally think that we're kind of okay. We are reasonable people. We're good people. And so people like us are good people, so to speak. So in general, we're often attracted to people like us. So if you like, for instance, um, playing tiddlywinks and you believe that um, the monsters and raving loonies party will be the best to run the government, you'd probably be attracted to similar people who, who think the same thing and have the same, same kind of beliefs. 
Um, we've all probably heard the expression, birds of a feather flock together. And there's a lot to that. There's a lot to that. Um, sometimes people say, well, what about opposites attract? And there does seem, seem to be an element of that. Sometimes we, attract it, we are attracted to people who have characteristics, possibly, that we would like. Um, if we don't have much confidence, we might see somebody who's very attractive and confident and, and, and be really drawn to them because unconsciously or, or even consciously think, yeah, I really admire this confidence in this person. I'd like to be more like that. And unconsciously, we might think maybe if I hang out with them, it'll rub off on me or I'll learn something or I'll enjoy their company or something like that. So, um, yeah, I think if we're attractive and confident, I'm not sure we're usually attracted to people who are not. Um, although some people are rescuers, some people are drawn to to rescue others. Not sure that's a particularly healthy attitude. Um, it's great to want to help, and it's great to help people when we can. But ultimately, it's probably not great if we take on the responsibility for any other beings. Um, for starters, they might start to resist it or resent it at times. And if we're not able to actually help them, then they might blame us. And then we might get frustrated and think, why do I have to do this? Not forgetting that, that actually we chose to do that. And often if we try to run somebody else's life, we don't have the time for our own. So I'm um, not sure rescuing is such a good thing. Yeah. OK, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll try to keep going until any other questions come up. Um, if you have any thoughts on what I'm sharing, um, please do comment. If you think I'm saying things that are absolutely ridiculous, please do comment. Um, I'm not the only um, person who might have an opinion. And sometimes I might get it wrong. But uh, yeah, in general, we tend to like people who are like ourselves. In NLP and other areas of psychology, there are often elements of what's called mirroring and matching. So if you see somebody and maybe you want to, I don't know, maybe you want to have a chat and you're in a cafe, um, if you sometimes do something as strange as match their breathing patterns, often they'll actually notice that and feel, hey, I'm in sync with this person for some reason. What's going on here? This is pretty weird. I feel there's a connection between us, and, and, and there is, and it's you're, you're choosing to mirror their breathing patterns. And it sounds really weird and ridiculous, but mirror and matching is very powerful. If you're sitting with somebody and they're sitting there and they're talking and then suddenly they fold their arms, for instance, possibly, um, if you also fold your arms, unconsciously they'll get a sense of, hey, this person is like me and they're following me and, and there's a connection and so they feel more connected to you. Um, the, the term that's often used is rapport. If you are in rapport with somebody, you can get there or you can get there by mirroring and, max, uh, mirroring and matching their actions and sometimes their breathing, sometimes their pace. So if I'm speaking at this general pace at the moment and, and perhaps you want to connect with me, then you would speak at a similar pace. And if you spoke like this and it's really fast and I can't really hear you saying because you're thinking about too fast, then that's probably not going to encourage any kind of connection because I'm going to be sitting here going, what, 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 slow down, slow down. So mirror matching is, is very important, I believe anyway, and from what I've read and in my experience. Um, again, don't accept this as gospel. Put it through your own filters. filters see if that makes sense to you. If it does, great. If it doesn't. Just let it go. Just let it go. Yeah. OK, no comments for, oh, God, more comments. Finally. OK. <laughs> Shannon, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Lots of good mornings. OK, what are some tools that we can use to help us care for others, not carry their problems as our own? Um, I really believe that the main thing that we can do is to really inhale, imbibe, and really internalize the belief that we are not responsible for others. Even for our kids and our hubbies and wives and things. Yes, we are connected, we've chosen to live together, but we cannot we cannot be responsible for their ultimate well-being. We can look after them, feed them, clothe them, house them, etc., um, and do what we can to help, but ultimately we cannot make anybody happy and we cannot be made unhappy by anybody else. So if we can if we can internalize that and come from a place of, yes, I'd love to help you and support you with your problems. And ultimately, I want to help you find your own solutions. 
Um, I think that's quite an important thing because it's so easy to think, oh, geez, this person has problems. Nobody else is helping them. They're not able to help them. They are weak. They can't do it by themselves. I've got to help them. And that, again, sets us up for big challenges because if we think that it's our responsibility for somebody else's life, um, yeah, we can get into a lot of trouble. And ultimately, it's not helpful if we're, if we're encouraging dependence in any way. I mean, certainly with children, obviously, there is a level of dependence. Um, hello, Rebecca. Welcome back. Um, but yeah, if we can find a way of encouraging independence, there's a lovely expression. The greatest master is not he or she who who has the most followers, but, but he or she who creates the most masters or nurtures or encourages the most masters. Um, the teachers that I love to listen to or read, they are all the ones who who say, you are powerful, you are strong, you can learn this. You, know, you are no no lesser than me. We, we all have the same capabilities, the same mastery at some level, and, and we might be at different levels on our journey, but we can all achieve that mastery. You know, No one is better than anybody else. We might have more skills or experience or knowledge, but if we can encourage in others that they do have the abilities to find their own answers, that I think that's a very, very important and powerful thing. Okay, Shannon, another question. What are some behaviours we might be exhibiting to help us understand that we may be starting to carry carry others. Um, <clears throat> getting really caught up in, in, for want of a better term, their negative their negative emotions, their, their feeling down. So if they're feeling down and we find ourselves dragged down to that level and also feeling that negative emotion much of the time, that might be an indication that maybe we get a little, a little too caught up in uh, their problem is my problem, um, my responsibility to fix it. Um, Again, we, we all want to help. We naturally, human beings are naturally helpful. We want to help if we can, and if we get the chance and we are able, wonderful. But again, don't don't encourage dependence or allow them to be become dependent. People in the helping industries have to be careful with that sometimes. As a counsellor or, or something like that, we all want to have a good living. And obviously, if we get paid, that's good. But sometimes if we're not careful, we could be unconsciously encouraging dependence because we get another session that, you know, we get paid for another session, and that's great. I'm not saying people do this deliberately, but it's something we want to be aware of. Yeah, so if, if we find ourselves getting really caught up in the same emotions, we kind of let ourselves be dragged down. We're not actually much use. If we're caught up in those emotions, we're not, we're not thinking clearly. Um, the best thing we can possibly do is remain in our centre and be as comfortable and calm and, and powerful as we can be, because then we have something to offer. We have we have an example to offer of somebody who can remain present and remain centered. And I think for myself, if I'm in a tricky situation and I'm and I see some people around me, I don't usually go to the people who are caught up in my stuff because often they're, oh, that's dreadful. Oh no. Oh, I commiserate. I'm so sad. That's dreadful. Oh, oh no. Grumble, grumble. Um, whereas if I see somebody who's in it. A space of calm and who who is able to hold our space hold our emotional state with compassion and with love and without falling into it then for me oh I'm, I'm almost drawn up outwards so they're not drawn down into my negative emotional state but i'm drawn upwards and i can relax back into peace and when i can do that i feel more peaceful and more optimistic and confident and Often ideas come to me where I can solve my own problems. So that's probably one way of realizing that you might be caught up in somebody's problems. Um, yeah, it's not really behavior. It's maybe an emotional state. Behavior might be, yes, trying to help them more, more often than might be useful. Um, and some people don't actually want to be helped for various reasons. Oh, there's a poor fellow at the moment who I'd, I'd love to help, but he, he, he doesn't really see there's a challenge in his life and <clears throat> if that's the case there's no point in me offering help because first he's going to say what do i need help for and then he's going to start pushing and resisting and then i'm not in a good space i can't push back i can't say no i know better than you do about your own life that doesn't go anywhere um, so i think a lot about being helpful is not insisting about not saying i know better about you than you it's about 
acknowledging that ultimately the other person is the best expert for them. Okay, some good tools to use during this isolation times. Okay, well, at the risk of stating the obvious, we're using a great tool at the moment, the internet. Um, these things that have been put on as part of many, many wonderful events like Happiness Aid here, it's a wonderful thing. So many, so many people are, are offering what they know and, and uh, doing their best to support and encourage others. So anything like this is good. Um, okay, not anything, but most of them are. U usually people are wanting to help and they're offering useful things. Um, other aspects of the internet can be very, very useful. Uh, it depends what you're interested in. Um, okay, Karen, we'll get on to you in, in a moment. Yeah, um, good tools. Use the internet. Like, depending on who you're connected with on Facebook, there is some stuff that's not useful. There's a lot of fear mongering. But if you're, if you can connect to, for instance, groups and pages that that fill you with joy, then it becomes a different experience. For instance, I love comedy. I love humour. So I connect with with pages and, and groups that are full of jokes and humour and lovely videos and I love cats and I love nature and so I watch these kind of things and they just fill me with joy. They absolutely fill me with joy. And often I call my friends using Facebook or Skype or, or even a phone, a phone call. For me, these are tools that, that can be extremely helpful, extremely useful. Yeah. Okay, I'll move on to Karen's question for now. This is a, another good question. Feeling stuck, made redundant a few weeks ago. My career is at a standstill. Feeling lost. Yeah, I can appreciate that. That's that's tough. Um, I've, I've experienced some of that myself. Um, the best that I've come to is this is temporary. This whole situation is temporary. Uh, throughout history, there have been p pandemics, there have been plagues, there have been these kind of things. Unfortunately, a lot of people have died. Um, yeah, we don't know how how this one's going to pan out. Nobody knows. The, the guys in charge of politicians, they like to give these big confident statements about we're going to do this and this is how long it's going to take. But ultimately, they really don't know much more than we do. Um, we're all kind of finding our way. So <clears throat> it's temporary. This too shall pass. Um, it sucks, yes, it does at times, it really does. Um, the government does seem to be helping with payments. Um, they're probably not coming quickly enough for everybody. They're probably not as comprehensive as they could be, but um, it seems that they are moving in the right direction to, to financially support us, and hopefully that will come in time for us all because obviously financial worries are a big one. Um, with respect to Korea, um, I think that, yes, obviously our career and work has stopped for many of us, except for, for maybe people who work in supermarkets or, or medical people. Um, many of us, our career is at a standstill. But when we return, when this whole thing is over, we will reboot Earth some way. Not quite sure how. We'll make it up as we go along. And when we do, the fact that we've had this break it's not going to count against against any of us individually, as, as you can imagine, because we're all in the same boat. So I don't think that's going to count against us. Um, depending on our career, we can actually use this time to to study and possibly learn more about our chosen field. Um, I don't know what field you're in, but in many fields, we can learn on the Internet either cheaply or for free. Um, much of my career has been computing in the past. These days, I'm more more drawn to life coaching because I prefer I prefer the interaction, the human interaction. I prefer ways that can help us to optimize our lives, to live better in a more rewarding, more rewarding manner. Um, and I can learn more how to coach, and, and and people who are into computing can study more computing. And YouTube has countless examples of how to learn certain things. Um, so there's a lot of great resources online where you can improve your current skill set in your current career. Yeah, my identity was with organization. OK, was that with a particular organization or was that your career as in you were maybe a project manager or, or in human resources or something like that? Um, yeah, so, so there are many tools that we can find online. Um, even if we can't go to the library at the moment, even if we don't have a, an enormous bookshelf, um, actually, a few days ago, I thought maybe I can join my library online because of the special circumstances. So I went to New South Wales Library 
and I was able to join immediately, very quickly and very easily, just name and address and things like that. So now I'm a member of the New South Wales Local Library, <coughs> which is where I live, and I can read ebooks, a massive, massive range of ebooks for free. And that's wonderful because, again, it gives me an opportunity that I can learn. Disability facilitator, Karen. Okay. Learning new skills. Rianda, great, great. For eight years. Yeah. Yes, it's it's tough when we are put on pause. We are put on pause. Um, for me, it is this balance between keeping sane, well, relatively sane, <laughs> um, and nurturing myself. Self-care is extremely important. It's absolutely crucial. So that's on the one hand. And on the other hand, how can I improve my skill set? What can I learn? Maybe there's a book I've always wanted to read about improving my career skills that I never had the time for. So, so now maybe I have this time. Finally, I have this time. Um, if I can't find the time now, <laughs> I've got no chance when we go back to, well, I was going to say normal, but we're never going to go back to normal. Um, so yes, uh, find the balance between self-care, which is really, really important, exploring new possibilities in our career, new skills, maybe even a new career. Like, obviously, you don't want to jump ship just, just like that, but maybe if you've been drawn to a new career, start reading up a little bit about it. Um, you could even go into Google and say something like um, uh, career study, name of field, like career study disability or career study um, age care or career study anything. It doesn't really matter whatever you're drawn to. Um, let's see. Rachel, local community library has lots of ebooks and other resources online for adults and children. Wonderful. Yeah, Rhianda learning new things. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, Shalina, hello there. Do you think, according to the law of attraction, that this time has been a way to global consciousness level to get us all to reassess and level up our vibration to be more aligned with who we are and why we are here? I do. I do, absolutely. Um, there are countless people who are who are assigning all sorts of reasons why the virus came. Is it is it deliberately created? Was it an accident? Um, is it being created for good purposes, for bad purposes? And we could say yes to a lot of those questions. Ultimately, we don't know for sure. So I choose I choose to say, similarly to, to your thought, that okay, much of the world wasn't working. It was working for some rich people and some power people some powerful people, not all of them, but for many of them. And it wasn't working for anybody else. It wasn't working for the average worker. Um, in the last 10 or 20 years, the proportion of wealth that's been owned by the super rich has gone way up. Um, the amount of money it takes to own a house these days has, has gone up. Um, it's been harder to service a mortgage. It's a lot of people have had to have two jobs or, or maybe go into the gig economy. Um, so a lot of the, a lot of, Business as usual hasn't worked for us human beings. It hasn't worked for the planet. It hasn't worked for nature. It hasn't worked for, for instance, minorities, women, people of color. Um, there's been a lot of discrimination against various minorities. And I think, yes, this is an opportunity where we can't be as busy as we have been in the past. So this is an opportunity to sit down and say, OK, has my life been going the way I wanted? Have I been spending it the way that I wanted to? Have my values been the values that are actually useful for me? Or are they values that I picked up by watching too, too much TV, maybe, and watching the adverts where say, go buy, 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 buy. Um, you're really unhappy. You can't be happy until you buy this new toy. Um, has that been serving us individually? Um, th there's a lovely line that says, most people spend money they don't have to buy things that they don't want to impress people that they don't like. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. So, so yes, I, I really believe that this is a time for us to say, has my life as I've been living it really been working for me? Or have I been basically unconsciously working in a job I don't like with people I don't like, getting stressed out, coming home, being totally tired, not exercising, knocking, not looking after myself, slumping in front of the TV, eating bad food, and not looking after myself. If I've been doing that, maybe I can choose differently. Like if I want to start exercising, I've got the time. And you don't need to spend an hour of the day every day in the gym. I spend maybe 15 minutes a day exercising, maybe 20 minutes a day. 
and I'm I'm very fit. I run up tall buildings for fun. I mean, I'm crazy, but I am as fit and healthy as I think I've ever been. And it's only 15 or 20 minutes a day. So we have the time. It's a great time to look at, do I want to reinvent my life? Do we want to reinvent our society? Do we want to continue to pay sportsmen ridiculous amounts of money because they can put a ball through a hoop or through a goal? Are they really worth millions of dollars a year? <clears throat> How come teachers get paid hardly anything? How come people who care for others, either in families or with aged care or <clears throat> in disability, why are these people paid so little? That's madness. What is more important than caring for other people? And there are some people here talking about gardening. Leander, Karen, gardening, wonderful. <clears throat> Getting in touch with nature again. Like somehow in the West, we've come to look at ourselves as separate and better than nature. That's crazy. From that point of view, it's so much easier for us to abuse the planet, to pollute the planet, to, to open a new coal mine, to, to do fracking and all those crazy things. It's madness. We can't possibly be separate from nature. We are part of nature. So gardening is a great way that we can get in touch with nature again. There are many other ways. We can go for a walk, either in the woods or for those of us lucky enough to be on the coast, go to the beach. Now, OK, we don't want to have 20 of us within a few square metres, but we can go for a beach stroll, go for a walk in the beach, go for a swim, maybe want to go out on our own or with a friend. Yeah. Does the world, the way it's been running for the last few decades or centuries, does it work? I don't think it has in many regards. Pollution, destruction of environment, um, species, animal species going extinct, hasn't worked. So maybe this is a pause where we can say, OK, how can we do this instead? And nobody has all the answers, but each of us has something to contribute. We all have some wisdom, some experience that we can contribute. Thinking of new direction, Karen, absolutely. Yeah, for ourselves, <coughs> for our family, if we live with a family, or for our partner, if we don't have kids, for our community, for our society. What else is possible? What else can we do? Do we really want to keep cutting down the forests? Well, a lot of people say, well, we need the wood. What else are we going to do? Well, no, actually, there are solutions. There's something called hemp, industrial hemp, which is a plant, which is a plant that's been known for thousands of years. And it's been used over the centuries for just about everything. It makes wonderful clothing. It makes clothing that is better than artificial fibres like nylon and Teflon and things. It makes clothing that is better than cotton. Cotton takes up an enormous amount of water. And in a country like Australia, where we don't have much water, it's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, if we replaced hemp instead of cotton, we'd, we'd have much better quality of land. We could use it for better quality of clothes. We can make paper from hemp. If we, if we used industrial hemp, we wouldn't need to cut down another tree. We could create building materials from hemp. We can create, oh, you can create fuel from hemp. You can create um, health foods from hemp. If anybody has more questions, please do ask. And in the meantime, I'll, I'll keep going on this one. Um, hemp has a wonderful um, balance of essential fatty acids. It has all the eight essential um, amino acids that we need for health. Uh, hemp can be used for so many things. It can, it can absorb industrial waste and it can take it out of the land. It can increase the qualities of the soil. Henry Ford made a car out of hemp and similar things maybe 100 years ago, and it ran on hemp fuel. And he took a sledgehammer to it and tried to break it, and the sledgehammer bounced off the bodywork because hemp was so powerful and strong. And so if we started growing more hemp, for instance, we wouldn't need to cut down another tree and it would improve the quality of the soil. Um, there are countless solutions like that, and most of them already exist. We already know that solar is good. Solar panels are good. Um, there is another form of solar that uses mirrors to concentrate the rays of the sun into one area, very, very high temperature, and heat up water, and then that will power a normal turbine to produce energy that way. There are countless examples. 
So now we have the time, maybe it's a good opportunity to have a think about how do we want to remake the world when this is over? Have to jump off, Sharon. No problems. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you joining us. Um, so yes, there are so many things that most people didn't have time for or couldn't find time of when, when we were really busy before. So many people didn't have time to exercise or couldn't find time or, or thought that you had to spend an hour a day in the gym. I'm not a big fan of gyms. Often they're sweaty and smelly and you've got to queue up for equipment. Not all of us like the gym. Um, I've actually trained as a fitness trainer and I understand the theory, but you don't need a gym. If you can go outside and find some steps, steps are amazingly good for exercise. Walking up steps, they're very, very high intensity if you go fast, but they're very, very low impact on the joints, so they don't trash your body. Steps are wonderful, either in a house or outside or in a building. Um, yeah, don't use the elevator. Personally, I think elevators should be banned unless you're moving stuff that's heavy or you have a doctor's certificate. Don't use the elevator, use the steps. You might be out of breath at the moment, but you'll be amazed how quickly you get stronger and fitter. And it doesn't cost anything. If you're not drawn to the steps for whatever reason, go outside, have a walk, have a swim, have a jog if that appeals, get on a bike, go for a, a friend, go for a walk with a friend and have a chat. Yeah. Hemp houses, absolutely, Karen. Wonderful things. There's a thing called hempcrete, which is a concrete that uses hemp. Ah, there are so many advantages to it. It's resistant to many bugs and things that can attack wood. Um, it improves the quality of the, the house. It is strong. Um, at the end, at the end of the lifestyle of a house, you can actually knock it down and reuse it. Um, it's, oh, it's UV resistant. Yeah. I teach Zumba. Is that right, Karen? That's great. Beach walking keeps you sane with your pooch. Excellent. Yes, there you go. You've got a pet. Pets help keep people sane as well. Yeah. So many pets, they, they offer so much love and companionship. And what do they need? A handful of food every day. Maybe a walk if it's a dog. Yeah. Pets remind us of our connection with other beings. Sometimes pets are easier to be with than some people because pets don't usually judge you. You don't need to dress up, or if you're a woman, you don't need to put makeup on just to be with your pet. They'll love you, whatever, no matter what. And that, that kind of unconditional love is, is powerful. It's very, very powerful. Yeah. So if you've got pets, wonderful. If you don't, maybe, maybe you might not be able to get one at the moment, but lots and lots of pet videos online, cat videos, dog videos, donkeys, goats, all sorts of creatures, wildlife, belly fub. Hmm, is that belly rub? Could be belly rub. <laughs> yeah, belly rubs are good. Pets love belly rubs. So do human beings, last time I checked. Um, so, yeah. Um, there are so many things that we can do that will lighten our mood. Even if they might seem artificial, like watch a video, you might think, oh, that's a bit artificial. But... If you've got a lot of time and you're not quite sure what to do and you're not feeling your best, why not watch a cat video or, or why not go and cuddle your, your pet? Why not? Yeah. Do we have any more questions at the moment? Any more questions at the moment? This is a wonderful time for us to reinvent ourselves individually, as a family, as a community, all the way out to as a planet. Do we still want to run the stock markets the way that they've been running? Do we still want to run business the way that it's running? Do we still want to run the gig economy where more people are losing jobs with benefits and going into the gig economy where they've got a bid on every last little thing and compete for price with people living in the third world? Do we really want to be focusing in that direction or do we want to be moving more towards a universal healthcare system, for instance? Like the direction in the last few decades, in especially the Anglo-Saxon world, has been private health insurance. Is that such a good idea? I mean, if you don't have the money, then you don't get health care. Is that really how we want to run our society? And if you're an insurance company, the main thing that you do every single time is see if you can get out of paying. Is that really how we want to have our health system? I mean, America is the prime example. Often in America, if you go to hospital, they check your insurance. If you haven't got any, 
no, you can't come in, we might help you. People get bills that bankrupt them. Is that really the direction we want to go? Now, I'm not saying I have all the answers. Of course I don't. I'm just one person. But we all have opinions and we all have experience and beliefs. And out of all of us, we create our societies. Do we want to create companies for profit that make huge amounts of profits? Is that our main goal in life? Profit, wealth, money, or maybe well-being, well-being of ourselves individually, of our communities and the planet? What's more important? Yeah. Hemp hand cream, Rachel. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Okay. Belly rub. Yes. Excellent. My dog is my life. Okay. Well, it's great that you get such joy from him or her. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Hemp is great. I have hemp seeds every day. It's um, incredibly healthy. It really is. And uh, there's been a lot of a lot of misdirection about hemp and marijuana because they are very similar plants. They're both from the, the uh, cannabis sativa family. And yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of propaganda around marijuana. It's been demo demonified as, as a drug, as something that's very, very dangerous. Um, marijuana is actually the, one of the healthiest medicines on the planet. And one of the reasons it was banned was because if marijuana was legal as a medicine, all the big drug companies wouldn't be able to sell their very expensive patent medicines. Now, some people might think I'm a conspiracy theorist, and I don't think so. I think it's just a question of follow the money. Yeah, big business wants to make money. Fair enough. No problems with that. But don't make natural gifts and natural medicines illegal. That's not fair. That's not really very, very good. Um, marijuana is, in, is incredibly powerful. I don't smoke it myself. I don't think smoking anything's so good for your lungs. Um, but marijuana has been proven in countless trials to be a, a, a wonderful medicine. Uh, there's a chemical inside called, oh, let's see, cannabinoids, I think, CBD, cannabis oil. That's being legalized around the country, around the world, um, because it is a wonderful medicine. And so gradually we, we seem to be getting an idea that yeah, we already have a lot of the solutions to the world's problems. We already have a lot of solutions. Like, there are a lot of people who don't have much money. And a lot of countries are cutting tax for the very, very, very rich. I'm not sure that's such a great idea. Do we really want to be cancelling school programs and childcare and environmental protection so a billionaire can get a little more tax back? I'm not quite sure that's a great idea. So this is an opportunity for us to ask, do we want to keep doing this? Do we really want to keep doing this? How much is enough? They've done studies that suggest that if you have very little money and you don't have enough food and shelter, then more money is going to help until you have enough food and shelter. But once you've got enough, more money actually doesn't make us happier. And that's a surprise to a lot of people. It's the truth. It's not money that makes us happy. As long as we have our needs met, food, shelter, love, connection, that kind of thing, as long as we have those, then extra money doesn't, doesn't make us happier. What seems to really make us happy is human connection with other people, connection with nature, with pets, with animals, with other people. Yeah, human connection. Yeah. When I think about, okay, I've got some time, what do I want to do now? Now, I could play with some gadget, some toy, and that can be fun for a while, but yeah, it gets old pretty quickly. Whereas if I go and hang out with a friend, for instance, to me, that's deeply rewarding. That's deeply nurturing. And I get enormous joy and connection from that. And with a real friend, that's always what happens. I mean, sometimes you might have a disagreement, but that's okay. You're never going to think and feel exactly the same as any other person and we can disagree with respect. But friends never get old, for me anyway. Our friends, they're nurturing, they're supporting, they love us, they accept us, they know they know our darkness, they know our weaknesses, and they still love us. And that never gets old. Whereas the gadgets that we buy through the years, often those things, often they end up in the garage, often they end up getting not, not used, and they end up getting chucked in garage sales and put on eBay or Gumtree and... Yeah, it seems that our connection, we're social beings. 
it seems that, that we love social beings. We're really, we're white for that. I mean, we evolved initially in tribes. Um, that seems to be one of the main differences between mammals, especially primates and apes, where we came from. Yeah, we're social beings. Maybe that's why we have this, this big brain to try and figure out social connections. Okay, Karen, human connection, toughest at this time. Yes, it is in some way. And yet in some way, it's actually easier. So many people in the past, we were so busy, we never had time to actually connect. Now, at the moment, we can't hug our friends. Okay, we can't really hug our friends. That's unfortunate, but understandable. I feel like I'm in an experiment. Yes, we are. We are in an experiment. But in a funny kind of way, that's all of life. Yeah. So in a way, yes, we can't hug our friends, so that is tough. But in another way, we have these internet tools. And because we've suddenly got all the time in the world, as much time as we're ever going to have, we have no excuses of being too busy. We have time to connect with our friends. We can get on the phone. We can use Facebook chat or texting or voice or video phone calls. The closer we get to the real thing, the better. Like text can be useful for sharing information or very short messages. But in my experience and from my understanding, the closer to a real life connection, the better. So something like a video chat on phone where you can both see each other talking. To me, that's it's not as good as real life, but it's pretty darn good. The only thing you can't do is, is touch and hug, um, which will come after this is over. But but yeah, we can, we really can connect with our friends. Like just think what this would have been like 20, 20 or 30 years ago with no internet, when phone calls were very expensive. We'd have to be very careful. I can only afford to call you for five minutes twice a week. These days, if we have an internet connection, we have time to connect as much as we want. There's no limit. All it costs is our internet connection. We have a phone that's a more powerful computer than existed on the planet maybe 30, 40 years ago. Um, we can connect with people. So, so take the opportunity to connect with your friends and your relatives and people maybe you haven't talked to for a while. This is a great opportunity. G'day there. How are you doing? How's this lockdown been for you? Tell me about your life. I've missed you. I'd love to hear. Love to hear what's been happening for you. Big Brother is watching. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes Big Brother is watching, there's no doubt. But the way I see it, um, if Big Brother is watching me and really interested in what I'm up to, it's a really slow news day. <laughs> They've got better things to do than watch a boring guy like me who <laughs> is no threat to, to anything. Um, so, yeah, Big Brother is probably watching at some stage and watching some people. But... There's not enough of them to watch all of us. <laughs> and, and most of us are pretty, most of us are no threat to anything. So I personally don't worry about that. Um, yeah, we've got to decide for ourselves. I don't worry about that myself. Connection within myself. Yes, that's a very important one. That's very important indeed. There was an oracle in Greece where people went to read the future, to be told about the future. And at the entrance, it said, know thyself. And until this pandemic, we'd often been far too busy to actually sit down and spend some time with ourselves. We'd either be working or dealing with family or in front of the telly or on a screen or on another screen. And often that was a way of hiding from ourselves. Often we've had things that weren't quite right in our lives and there was this nagging feeling within ourselves that we were trying to trying to bring it to our conscious attention. Something's not right. Stop. Take some time. Think about, feel into this. What's not right? And sometimes it's been really, really valuable, important stuff like, are you looking after yourself enough? Maybe you're working too much. Maybe you want to take some time to just go for a gentle walk. Even if it's just for a 10 minute walk in the park, a couple of times a week. That by itself is profoundly healing. That's where the real work is, amigo. Si, sí, claro, absolutamente. Yes, it's so important that we get to know each other, that we slow down and, and get to know who we are. 
are the goals that we've been chasing are they important are they are they our goals or are they goals that we've been taught by society by adverts by big companies by celebrities selling stuff by big government are they our goals it's good to ask that question sometimes they might be like if we want if we want to earn enough for a holiday or, or earn enough to pay our way through a, 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 a study course that might be our goal great it doesn't really matter what the answer is as long as we con consciously ask are these goals mine are these values mine do i really want to be chasing you know a new model of car every two two or three years or do i have to get the latest iphone every single year are these things really worth it do i really want to go into debt to get a new toy to impress somebody doesn't do much for me i'm happy with last year's model i'm happy with not buying a brand most of the time you're playing for the brand name do we really want to spend that money on a brand name got to decide for ourselves so yes connection with myself that's so important who am i what do i really want eventually we're all going to be dead we're all going to be we'll be gone we have a finite time and uh, oh yeah there have been some beautiful articles occasionally that come out asking people who are old people who are not got long to live and they ask them what have you learned in your life and and what are your regrets and how would you do it differently and maybe this is a time for us for us to ask those questions before we're on our deathbed while we still have time left where we still have many years or decades ahead of us yeah am i am i spending my time doing what i really want to do like time is ultimately all we have money comes and goes but once we've spent time it's gone it's gone what's more precious than time i think it was gandhi he said there is more to life than increasing the speed through it maybe depth is more important than than speed through life are we rushing too much are we hurrying too much are we taking on too much are we saying yes too much sometimes it's good to say no if there's a situation where somebody says oh can you please do this for me it's, it's often it's often very tempting to say yes because we want to help and we want to please uh, and that's that's nice that we want to help but sometimes we're already stretched too thin and if somebody says can we help and we go oh, oh i was going to go and do this and relax oh no no I'll, I'll i'll put others first yes i'll be happy to help and sometimes we take on too much and then we start getting resentful and we resent them for asking and we resent ourselves for not saying no it's a fine balance between looking after ourselves and helping and contributing in the world whirling dervish syndrome <laughs> absolutely <laughs> going around so fast we don't know which way is up we need to take time for ourselves we need to take time for just ourselves not all the time but sometime and often that lets us to relax to calm down to get clear about what we want in our lives we might be in a relationship that that is kind of comfy but isn't working anymore because maybe we've outgrown it maybe our partner isn't treating us well and we've just kind of assumed no oh, it's just the way it is or maybe we're scared to leave or maybe we're scared to even consider leaving maybe this is a good time to really evaluate these things and once we've got a little clarity ourselves we can sit down with our partner and say hey this isn't working so well with me at the moment um can we make it better how can we make it better what do you think what do you feel are you enjoying this are you still enjoying this is this is this rewarding for you as well sit down take the time not in front of the tv not going out and doing something in the world but just you and your partner and just explore your relationship is this all there is can we do better than this yeah what's not working for you this is what's not working for me i'm not here to blame you i'm just here to share you share with me and together we can we can work out how to do this better what do you think for me a lot of this is becoming becoming more conscious of our lives becoming more aware of yeah becoming more aware of what what really matters what's really important 
And although we have different beliefs, <coughs> different desires, different hobbies, different opinions, different experience, <coughs> there seem to be certain things that that are in common. We seem to want enough time for ourselves, enough time to be social, enough time to <coughs> work on our own path of healing or growth, some time for exercise, some, some time, <coughs> excuse me, alone with others, working, resting, playing. Yeah, I don't think we want to do one thing all the time. So we want to have balance. And this is a great time for us to look into our lives and see what is possible. What do we really want? And you might think, yeah, well, some people want things that are really selfish, like they want, want to buy a you know, really, really fancy, fancy, expensive cars and selfish things. But often that's because they haven't had a chance to take the time to really relax and think about what makes them happy. Oh, I really like the nice car. Oh, yay. But after a while, they think, well, yeah, I don't know. It's not quite as fun as I thought it would be. And yet I like going out and, and playing playing this sport. Oh, I hadn't thought about that before. I hadn't, hadn't done that since a kid. Maybe it's a good time to, to start doing that again. Now, if it's a team sport, probably can't do that at the moment. But some sports are individual, some hobbies. Yeah, hobbies. Remember hobbies? People used to have a lot of hobbies in the past, but then life got really busy. Maybe this is a chance to dust off some of those old hobbies. What did you want to do when you were a kid? What did you want to do when you were young before life got so busy? Yeah. Tracy, welcome. Happy Monday. Same to you. Some people don't like Mondays. Well, I can understand that if you're doing a job you don't like. Some people are still doing that. Some people have been <laughs> involuntarily rested for the moment. Good chance to ask. Do we enjoy our job? If not, why not? Can we make it better? Can we have a chat with our boss and see if we can find a way of making it better? Maybe there's something else we've always wanted to do. Maybe this is the perfect opportunity to look into that. What did I used to love doing when I was young, when I was a kid? What did I want to be when I was a kid growing up? Are those dreams still realistic? I mean, if you're 60, might be a bit late to be an astronaut, maybe. Um, might be a bit late to be a professional football player. But who knows? <laughs> it's not for me to say. Um, but yeah, really reconnect with ourselves and ask, who am I really? Be willing to hear the answers. What do I want? What are my values? How do I want to contribute? How do I want to help the world? How do I want to make a difference? Now, I can't save the whole world by myself, but all of us can do a little something, whether it's in our career or volunteering or, or anything, really. There are countless ways to contribute. They don't have to be paid. If they get paid, that's great, but... We all have gifts, we all have skills, we all have ways that we can make a difference in the world. Yeah. Any more questions? I feel that I'm <laughs> rabbiting on. Hopefully some of it's useful. Uh, any more questions at the moment? Any more questions? Let me see. No questions at the moment. Okay. Well, uh, it's been almost an hour. You Ah, Kerry, I want to run a community center. Wonderful. Great. That's wonderful. Start thinking about it. Start planning it. Start playing with the ideas. What kind of skills would you need? Do you have those skills already? Are there skills you need to learn to improve? Great. Whenever I have something like that come to mind, I always go to Google. Google, skill sets, learn, free, online. Often I find amazing answers. Often there will be Facebook groups for people who are interested in whatever you're interested in. Often you can go there and ask wonderful questions and get amazing answers from people. Yeah, yeah, I do that, or I can do that, or I've done that, and, and here's what, what, what 
can help and here's what I found useful. And yeah, so many people are out there who love answering questions and who love supporting others and who love encouraging them and, and helping them on their, on their dreams. Yeah, the internet's not perfect. We know there are a lot of problems with the internet, um, but there's a lot of good that's come out of it. People can connect really easily. Yeah, birds of a feather forgot flock together. I feel happiest the air. Karen, great. Grant writing course needed. Great. There are heaps of grant writing courses, books, opportunities. Um, Google will help. You can find things through Google. You can find things on Facebook if you search on Facebook for those things. The seed is planted. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. That's great. Well, maybe that's what we're all here for, to encourage each other to find out what, what our dreams are, to find out more about each other, to reconnect as human beings, all the things that we've never had time to do before. That's how we build a, work, a world that works for everybody. Social communities that work, whether they're online or offline in the real world or both. At the moment, we probably need to stick to the online world just for now, but we can start preparing, we can start planning, learning, educating, supporting, researching. We can do all of that online. Yeah. How many people have, have said, oh, geez, I wish I had the time to do that. Now we've got the time. Now we've got all the time in the world. OK, we can't travel. We can't do a lot of stuff in the flesh. Fair enough. Let's not focus on what we can't do. Let's focus on what we can do. Countless possibilities. Countless possibilities. So this is a great opportunity. This is a great opportunity. Yeah. OK, well, um, there are no more questions. So we've been on this particular call for nearly an hour. So when the hour's up, I will stop the call um, unless any other questions come up. Yeah. Please use this opportunity. We've never had so much time. So, yeah, ask yourselves, what have you always put off because you've never had the time to do it? This is a great opportunity to take the time. We've got the time. So many possibilities. Nurture ourselves. Yeah, do what we've always wanted to do but not had the time. Support and nurture each other and encourage each other. Get on with the phone onto the phone with somebody that you've wanted to talk to, but you never had the time. Call up your friends, see how they're doing, connect with relatives, see if you can. Yeah, sometimes there are burnt bridges. This might be a good opportunity to try and salvage a relationship. Hey, I'm really sorry that we, we finished like that. Can we can we reconnect? Can we have another chat? Can we make this better? How can we make this better? What a great opportunity. Yeah, what a great opportunity. OK, it hasn't been so much about the law of attraction, but that's OK. We had some great questions come up and I've been happy to speak to them. Hopefully some of it's been useful, some of it's been helpful. So, yeah, hopefully we've we've all got a few things we can hmm, we can reflect on. A few things we can think about, a few things that we can take away to make the best use of this time. Because in a few weeks or a few months, nobody knows for sure, this will be over. This will be over and we will be busy again. We will have a busy life. And so let's hope that when we say yes to these various activities that fill our lives, let's hope we're saying yes consciously because it's something that we feel drawn to, not because we think we should or we must or we ought to or we have to. Let's hope that we operate more from choice, more from freedom, and that we find the balance where we can look after ourselves as well, where we can nurture and look after ourselves, our family, our community, within a career, and possibly maybe volunteering. Yeah. Let's make the best use of this time. So thank you for joining me. I apologize for the first mess up. I had no idea what's going wrong there. It didn't work. What a nuisance. But we had a good hour. 
and I'm grateful for that. And uh, yeah, please have a think about your lives and how, how best to use this pause. Join some of the other wonderful presenters at Happiness Aid. Yeah, like this video if you found it useful, share it with others because it, it's been recorded. And if you want to make a presentation yourself, volunteer. We all have gifts to share. We all have knowledge and experience and wisdom to share. So take a risk, maybe make a presentation. As you can tell, the audience are pretty good. The audience is always supportive and friendly. You're not going to get judged for it. Yeah, have a think about it. Yeah. Cheers to you, Karen, as well. Thanks for joining us and thanks to everybody else. I'm going to end the call now. Unless I hear anything in the last few seconds. But yeah, take the time. Slow down. Don't rush through life. Plenty of time. Quality of life. Without quality of life, what's the point? No amount of toys and expensive doodads is going to make the difference if you've not got a quality of life with good company. Yeah. All right. It looks like that's it. So um, thank you again for joining me and enjoy the rest of Happiness Aid and the strange, unusual time we're going through. Okay. Bye-bye.